Hello, good morning, and welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. What a beautiful morning we've got this morning. It's my first time out fishing on the boat in a while, and I couldn't ask for better conditions to be honest. Last time, last sorry, last time, this time last year, I had some really good fishing on the banks, so I'm gonna go and try them out to see if the fish have turned up yet. I also I need to top up my bait barrel for the crab pots, so I'm gonna go and try and catch some dogfish. I'm gonna try my hardest to catch the elusive dogfish. I just, this is what getting up that couple of hours earlier gets you. Let's go and see if we can't find some bait. Let's go. There we go, first fish of the day. Lovely little schooly bass. Just taken on a little fish minnow. Yeah, I just saw some birds working in the corner when I was steaming out. I thought I'll give that a little look. Oh, oh. Spiky. Very, very spiky. Get out. The little ones like that always seem to manage to spike to you. I mean, the big ones are easier to deal with. The little ones are just like a, a bar of soap with pins in it. Yeah, I just saw a couple of birds working in the corner of my eye as I was heading out. I thought, I bet there'll be some bass there. And there was. Perfect time for trying for them. Because what you'll find they often do first light and last light is the the corral like little tiny bait fish and push them up against the feature like a piece of reef or a piece of rock or even the coastline it's always worth a little flick with the lure the mackerel and the pilchards have been late turning up this year hopefully with them when they turn up everything starts to turn up everything comes on the feed just brings new life to it That's just the food source at the bottom of the food chain. That's what knocks on feeds everything else. It's all a little bait fish. Ah, it's just little tiny schoolies. I can feel them hitting the lure. A big bass will just smash it. It'll swallow it in one. Little ones come up and hit it and wrap it and hit the tail and you get knocks and bangs. <laughs> little tiny poor cod not what I was after they'll do us bait though them little tiny poor cod by the time you've by the time you've brought them up to the surface they're already blown so there's no point putting them back they're just seagull food but they do work quite well as bait I think everything in the food chain eats poor cod be a hard life being a poor cod <laughs> there is a massive shoal of something I'm expecting it's going to be either tiny white bait or it's going to be pilchards because it's everywhere in the sounder, all the way around the sounder for about 10 meters deep, but it's really fine. I think even poor cod eat white bait. Be a hard time if you got reincarnated as a white bait. The water. <laughs> The water in some of our previous videos were blessed down here in Cornwall with some fantastic water quality. The water is gin clear and beautiful and blue and then right now at the moment because we've had, we've had a load of heat waves, <laughs> we've had like 40 odd degrees and loads of sunshine, the water is a nice dirty shade of brown and green. We've got a visibility of about two feet and that's just because the algal bloom. Now it usually it happened last year at this time of year. It's going to be like this for probably a month now unfortunately that makes the fishing quite difficult not only because the clarity drops out but also because fish quite often they don't like the plankton they don't like too much of it it's um 
people speculate that it gets in their gills and it aggravates them other ones just been my personal feeling is that there isn't as much oxygen in the water so uh, the fish are either quite lethargic or they move off into cleaner water oh. yeah it is little mackerel one's better than none get myself sorted out Oh. Two more. Get half a dozen nice mackerel, and that'll be perfect. That'll set me up really well for when we get on the banks. I wouldn't mind a few little tiny pilchards as well, because I might try live baiting. We'll just see how it goes. But yeah, it's great to see all the bait returning. And a little whiting on the bottom. He's in the whiting's mouth. See if I can get it out. That is one of the white baits. And like I was saying that that, that shoal looked like it was full of white bait. Well, this is what's down there. These little white baits. And talk about matching the hatch. So a spinner that size. Or where, where have I just put it? I just put it down. The little fish minnow that I was fishing with earlier, a little white bit. There's no point using a six inch lure if all they're eating is this, because you won't catch them because they're used to feeding on this. So yeah, match the hatch. That one's a scad. That's a proper sized one. <laughs> yeah, that's a proper sized mackerel. I'll have that one. I'll have one more drop. I've just seen a decent little patch of fish come past. Yeah, all I do, I mean, you can work your feathers. You can work them up and down through the water column. But all I've done there was, I know roughly where I think the fish are going to be and I'll just drop the feathers down to that level. I mean, at the moment, they're right tight on the bottom because them dolphins have come past. So just drop the feathers down to the bottom like that. Just set them up at the back of the boat and the little rocking and the motion of the boat just bounces them a little bit so while I was busy doing something else rigging up my lures for when we get down on the reef there look there we go there's two more scad scad do look a lot different than the mackerel they've got like an armoured plated lateral line it, it is quite hard and if you rub it the wrong way it does hurt they've got like little dorsal spines like a bass and they have the most beautiful like i could call it almost like a lavender like a purple tint to their eye now i keep them all in a barrel of water like that some will use as live baits and some will dispatch and use as proper baits but yeah that's bait taken care of let's go on that reef always lovely to see aren't they and I've made it <laughs> the dolphin distractions I've made it in the end all I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to be fishing some little soft plastic lures the tide is just dropping away to slack so I'm getting away with little light lures when the tide picks up a little bit I've got the bigger ones Yeah, all I'm doing is I'm fishing over an area of reef that goes everything from 30 meters to 3 meters with small soft plastic lures for things like bass and pollock. Now as the tide's dropping off to slack you do end up catching more wrasse. All the fish drop towards the seabed so you have to fish lower towards the seabed where they're at. I do like catching a good balling rasp, but they don't have to chew up your lures. Now that fish hit me hard. <laughs> that one really did mess me up. Try and get another one of these lures on. 
Yeah, he's absolutely smashed me. Thought that lure wasn't fishing right. Predator fish like bass and pollock, they feed better with a bit of tide running. And also, because of the poor water quality at the minute, we're up against it. If we see one or two fish on the lures today, we'll be doing all right. I don't think this fish knows it's hooked. They're only tiny, tiny hooks as well. It might even be foul hooked. Doesn't know it's hooked. <laughs> That was absolutely no fight at all. The fish are just that slack with the tide. There was just no fight in it. Look, it's, it's only just now realized that it's been caught. But yeah, that was the size of the lure. And there we go. Gonna have to perform surgery on you, I think. Let me tweeze us out. Shed the hook himself. Right, well, there you go. A little tiny pollock. That, <laughs> that there actually, that just fully illustrates my point. Tiny lures, so match the hatch. I mean, that's, I don't even know what this weighs. 15 grams. So that's what they're feeding on, they're feeding on little tiny white baits, so presenting them anything but something tiny. And they're just not taking it. I knew there was fish there, they just weren't feeding. And they're that sluggish, I mean you saw the fight off that Apollo should have at least dove once. <laughs> but yeah, they're just slack. Because the tide hasn't properly started to flood yet, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a little bit of a drift about on the sand. We're not going to drift through far or very... <laughs> We're not going to drift very far or very fast, but we are going to drift a little tiny bit. And rather than swinging around on top of an anchor and, and getting all my lines tangled up, I might manage to pull out, might manage to pull out a rogue ray or maybe even a gurnard. Or we don't know. We'll find out. But the rigs all I'm going to be using is we're going to be fishing in around about 40 to 50 meters of water. So I'm using a four ounce locked in lead and just a three o hook with a little strip of mackerel. That's all it is. Really simple. These rigs don't need to be complicated. I'm just going to cast a couple of baits, distances from the boat. Reason why I cast them at different angles is if you cast them both together, they'll end up getting tangled. Hopefully, by casting them apart, you'll manage to keep the lines apart. Yep, that's literally all it is. The hook lengths are like two to three feet with a 3 or specimen extra and just little tiny strips of the mackerel. The reason I don't use big clumps is because I'm wanting to imitate little tiny sand eels or white baits that have died and are on the seabed. That's it. That's literally it. There's fishing on banks like this. There's, there's literally a list of 20 different species you can catch. I've caught Blonde rays, small eyed rays, taupe, eels, cod, pollock, rat, a lot. This little area of bank, it's just some sandbanks in the middle of rock. So not only do you get the species that live on the sandbanks, but also occasionally, other species that live in the rocks, they transit across. So yeah, could literally be anything. Just the type of fishing that I enjoy. I'll get another couple of rods set up, We'll get back to you. Let's try sticking the anchor down. Well, 
Now when we were drifting around I had one little rattling bite that was like off a doggy and nothing. So we'll try and stick the hook down. What's the worst that can happen? I've shown this in other videos but just in case you're wondering what I'm doing. I shut the anchor off the side of the boat and the buoy is used for hauling the anchor. Now I'll make it off to my after cleat there. The reason being is because I don't want to do all my work through the front window. So I'll make it off to the after cleat. We are pretty much anchored backwards now. And all I'll do is I'll pass the rope over the top, tie it off to the cleat. And then when I let this rope go, when I let it go there, tide will swing the boat around and we'll be laid back. It saves you having to worry about like fitting through the hatch and do it again. Yeah, you just end up banging your elbows and your head and that's the easiest way that I've found. And there look. Now we're laid right back in the tide. We're sat back now quite well. And we've got the first first customer. Like I say we're anything we're going to catch dogfish today, I know we're going to catch dogfish. But yeah, it could be anything else, could be a nice tub gurnard, could be a ray, could be a top. could be... But yeah, we're going to, I think this, <laughs> I think that's what this is, I think this is a dogfish. Try and show you the bite. There. You see that, when it goes, the, the gentle tugs is just the waves, just the sand. When it starts going erratic, that's the bite. Let's see what we've got. Yeah, my money's on dogfish. The first of the day. As it is, I don't really mind catching them today because I want to be keeping them for pot bait. Maybe thin them out a little bit on the ground. There's literally thousands and thousands of these about. You take a hundred a day and you still wouldn't touch them. Dogfish pretty much hook themselves. Now a ray, you can get a couple of different bites from a ray. That might be a ray bite. Oh. What was I just saying? <laughs> yeah, I think that one's a ray. This one's a dogfish. A dogfish will rattle and rattle and rattle. A rear bite you'll either get, like this one did, and that one's different. <laughs> yeah. I think I found a pack of doggies, but this one, it just hooped over. As in like, I probably missed the little tiny trembling bite as it found it, and then it just, as it swam off. Now this could be a, a 25 pound blonde ray, so there's absolutely no point in rushing yourself because it's not going to go in a wreck. It's living on sand, all it might do is bury its nose in for a bit. In which case all you do is just keep sustained pressure on it and it'll come up. Now them two doggies there, they, they can just sit there for a minute. You don't need to go mad, just hold sustained pressure on them. It was quite funny that I was just literally talking about the bites and I just saw the rod tip start arching away. Now a dogfish, a dogfish isn't likely to take your rod over the side. They just rattle and they just, like what's happening with this one here, look. These They're just nodding and rattling and nodding and just pecking away. But a ray, a ray has got the power to take your rod over the side. Nice male small eyed ray. Brilliant. There's a the hook look just in the corner of his mouth. I get the tweezers on that, one of these bit me last year. <laughs> I tell you what, it never off ripped the end of my finger off.
stick him in there in that barrel of water to calm down. And I'll sort the rest of this out. But yeah, all that rig was, just like with the other one, just a little locked in lead. Like that. Two and a half to three feet hook length, a three hour specimen extra, and little strips of mackerel. Anyone wondering what that boat's doing there? It's trying to really sneakily slide up alongside of me to take the numbers of where I'm anchored up. Yeah. If you're watching this, you're not very subtle. Just as I said, be a doggy and not the one as well. <laughs> it's a good job I was watching this rod. Because he very nearly went for a swim. Yeah, just a little dirt, 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 and then whoosh, the rod started lifting up. <laughs> like I said, there's no need to go crazy with him. Take your time. It's not uncommon for these big blondes to kite about in the tide. Well, I'm saying big blondes, this might not be a blonde. It feels heavy. It might just be a really big small eyed rig. Yep, not a blonde, just a big small eyed rig. A small eyed rig with a lot of fight. A lot of fight. Not surprised really because this is a big one. Yeah, she's a good one. This is a good, well, easy 10 pound plus fish. This one's a female and the other one's a male. This one's a male, this one's a female. You can tell this one's a male by these claspers here. The female doesn't have them. See? Get the hook out of that female and get them both released. That's good. It's nice to see a couple of nice fish. Got some doggies on the other rods as well. Put some biting on this white rod and I don't quite know what it is yet. I'm not sure if it's a ray or if it's a dogfish. Ray. Yep. Yeah, that was a really subtle bite. I just saw it kind of sit on it. Which raised their mouths are underneath. So when they find a bit, they have to position themselves on top of it. So what you'll often see is you'll see like a little bit of like a fluttering bite as it positions itself on top. Don't strike into it then, because it might not even have it in its mouth. What I waited for is I waited to feel it move off. So it's positioned itself on top of the bait, got the bait in its mouth, tasted it, liked it, and decided to swim away with it. I waited until it started to move and then lifted into it. Now rays aren't known as being massively hard fighting fish, but when you fish from light like this, it can be a lot of fun. Oh, this visibility here is terrible. <laughs> it really is terrible. Oh, another lovely little small eyed ray. Come on, back you come, back you come. 
I've only got a light hook length with this one, so I was wanting to take it easy. Yeah, this is slightly smaller and slightly lighter. This is 20 pound fluoro and a 2 -oh. I was hoping that it might have been a flatfish down there. But yeah, same again. Much easier to use a T-bar to pull the hooks out, to put your fingers near its mouth. Because it'll work. It'll work nine times out of ten with your fingers. And it'll be that one time when it'll catch you and you will really regret it. Like I say, one of them nearly had the end of my finger off one time. Sort the mother rods out. Fighting very strange, this one. It's another small eyed ray, but yeah, that was a really unusual fight. That was a really unusual fight from that. I mean, it is, this is big for a male. That is quite a big one. Really strong markings on this one as well. He's obviously one of the daddies down there. When you're picking them up, they have got a little soft pouch, like either side of the mouth here, that you can pick them up with. But what you need to watch for is, they have got a lot of thorns on their cheeks. <laughs> we are in the full run of the tide now, but this felt like a completely different animal. Right now it's stuck to the seabed, but when it hit, it, it does feel like a ray because it was like a dun, 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 as you can feel the wing claps, but it does feel like a bigger, a bigger fish. Yeah, the tide's properly coursing through now. There it goes again. Put the ratchet on so that when it runs you can hear it. Yeah, this does feel like a much better fish. Now look now, you see just by holding sustained pressure, the bend in the rod fights the fish. So I've dislodged it out of the bottom, and because the tide's running, because the tide's running that way, simply by the shape of the fish, it kites it up towards the surface. So as long as you can keep it going in one direction. Wow. I was right, this is a completely different animal, this. That is a massive <laughs> a massive blonde ray. No, oh, I can't get it in the nest. Have to do this the old fashioned way. Oh, 
my word! <laughs> yes! I hope you got to see some of that there. Get this useless net out of the way. That is an absolutely massive blonde rail. Now, I could quite comfortably say that's probably going to be my PB blonde rail. And it's a male as well. That's over 20 pounds. Good size of it. <laughs> what an absolute beast. But it's a thick fish as well. It's a proper solid fish. And there's the hook length. It's, oh, tell you what, that hook's, hook's about ready to come out. Hooks. Can't even pick it up. Usually I can swing them about in one hand. There's the hook look just in the corner of its mouth. <laughs> what an absolute giant! I popped that hook out and I'm gonna see. I'm gonna have to see if I can't in the barrel. Hooks out. Now bear it, that isn't a thornback, that's a blonde. But they're still covered in like serrated <laughs> everywheres. But yeah that is an absolute monster. <laughs> when it struck and when it stuck to the bottom I, I did say I was like this is a different animal this. And a male as well. I think that, uh, usually Ruth Ray's, the females had a bigger fish. But yeah, that's, a, that's an absolutely massive male. I don't even know I'm going to weigh it. I'll have to, I'll, I'll look around and see if I can't find a net sack or something to weigh it in. Well over 20 pounds. We have actually got a little bite on this rod. But I'm just show you this. This is the sack oh, that I weighed my rain. 28 and a half pounds. That is my PB by like eight pounds. <laughs> just an absolute mammoth fish. I can't do it justice, it is absolutely monstrous. And for it to be a male as well. It is just an absolute giant. Now, weighing big fish, whether it's rays, whether it's taupe, whether it's anything like that, unless you're going to be taking the fish for the table, you don't want to be hanging it from its mouth, from the scales, because you're not going to do it any favours at all. Now this guy is absolutely covered in, covered in thorns. He's had my fingers up about five times. Just gonna send him straight back. Oh, what an absolute giant he is. Just what an absolute giant. I do. Yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely over the moon. I didn't say uh, I didn't know I was gonna catch anything. And I've, I've managed to have I think I've had five small eyed rays and a PB blonde ray, which was an absolute donkey of a fish. I am. Um, I only used a couple of the scad. I've now got some mackerel to take home to eat. I've caught some dogfish that I can use in the pots, and I've had a nice day's fishing. And it is only quarter to twelve. I'm gonna. Well, I don't know if you can see, but my fingers. Yeah, there's nothing left of my fingertips. I fished these last baits out, tidied the boat up. If I catch anything else worth showing you, I'll put it in. If I don't, then I won't. I hope you've enjoyed joining me. I've really enjoyed myself. All the very best. See you later.